Hi there. Welcome back to the Win a Pageant podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby, and this is a very special episode of the Win a Pageant podcast. It's going to be a little bit different than you're used to, but you're going to absolutely love it. I guarantee that. In fact, I actually think I told Kristen this. I think this is going to be probably the most popular episode. Here's why. So a couple of weeks ago, actually now maybe over a month ago, had the opportunity to meet Kristen in person at her event called Crowned. It was an opportunity where she actually shared her story of the process that it took for her to become Miss USA and then the kind of unpleasant surprise of how Miss USA really felt to her. She's going to share that in this episode. But then what's really, really fascinating is what she has done with her life since that moment. So since giving up her title, so much has unfolded for her, and we're going to bring that to you today. Now, the extra special opportunity here is she's actually going to guide you through what she refers to as an encounter. And this is actually more like a guided visualization. If you've ever done that before, it's like one of those, you kind of close your eyes, get into a comfortable seated position, and then you just allow your mind's eye to take you on a journey. And What's really powerful about that type of experience is you really get, gather like the feelings that it feels when you step into that imaginary space in your mind. And as we know, our imaginations can be very, very colorful. And so this is an opportunity that she guides you through to really have an experience that you may not necessarily have on a day-to-day -day basis. So when I learned this at her event several months ago, or a month, several weeks ago, rather, I should say, uh, I, I was like, I have to share this with everybody at Win a Pageant because the way in which she does this, the, it's like, it's so unique to Kristen and it's just going to draw out in you so much incredible beauty. So I, I want to preface all of this to let you know that the best place to watch this video or to listen to this podcast is in a very quiet place so that you can fully participate when we go into that experience, which is about uh, about a 15 minute experience, I believe. So you'll want to just kind of be really in an open hearted place. So I do not suggest like being in a heavy workout on the treadmill or something. Uh, if that's where you're at right now, then it might be good to find a place to kind of step aside for this episode because it's, it's truly going to bless you. I know that she's going to want to hear your feedback because uh, she's got some more exciting things in the pipeline as well. So without further ado, I bring to you Kristen Dalton Wolf, Miss USA 2009 and founder of SheIsMore.com. Hi, winners. Welcome back to the Win a Pageant podcast. I'm thrilled to introduce to you Kristen. Kristen Dalton Wolf, welcome to Win a Pageant. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I know we've been trying to do this interview for a while. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, you're pregnant, so you do have a good excuse there. <laughs> you know, I, I keep hearing that I should use the pregnancy card more often, and I haven't used it like at all. But now that I'm nine months pregnant, I'm like, I need to start using that before. <laughs> you know, before it's too late. That's right. <laughs> before it runs out, you know, use it while you got it, girl. Ah, that's great. Well, it's such a pleasure having you on. I am, I, I of course have been following your journey since you were Miss USA and have just loved the work that you have been doing. And most recently we met at your event crowned, which we yeah. are going to be talking about a little bit today on this episode as well. But for those who have maybe not met you yet or don't know the whole, the full story would you share a little bit about how you got through your pageant experience and developed sheismore.com and kind of where you're at now? Well, God is so much fun because I just love how he unfolds our life uh, hmm, in phases and seasons, and he doesn't reveal things to us until we're ready. So uh, what I mean by that is, you know, when I was three years old, I knew that my dream was to be Miss USA. And so being Miss USA was a childhood dream for me. Um, my mom is Miss North Carolina USA. I have two younger sisters. And it was a family event every single year, like a holiday at our house, where we would watch the Miss USA pageant, make our predictions. And for me, Miss USA was a role model. And she inspired me. And I remember every time I watched the, the winning moment, I thought to myself, I want to be a role model for girls like she is for me. And so that was the driving force behind me wanting 
to see Miss USA. Plus, I also really love Disney princess movies and crowns, everything royalty, fairy tales. And it was just the perfect opportunity to be in the modern world and also live out <laughs> a modern day fairy tale. And um, so, so when I was in the seventh grade, I made a decision that I didn't want any distractions or detours to, to take me from the path of my dream. And so I made a vow one night to have a Bible study and I wrote a letter to God and I said, Dear God, I promise that I will not drink until I'm at least 21. I will not smoke. I won't buy drugs. Um, and I'm going to save my sexual purity until I'm married. Because those are all things that could, for me at least, I know, detour me from that focus. Um, and from being the role model that I wanted to be, because I wanted to be a light for God. So, um, so I essentially started preparing for the job of Miss USA nine years before I ever even set foot on the stage. Um, but also along that journey from the seventh grade on, uh, some life-defining moments happened where. Uh, competition and comparison crept in. I started not feeling like I was good enough. I started feeling like I needed to prove myself. And um, teachers spoke things into my life, like, you know, told me that I was just a dumb blonde. And I was overlooked in dance. And I was placed into a group with girls who were five years younger than me. And that was a passion for a passion of mine. And so that kind of like killed that in me. Um, not killed it because I definitely took, took it as it's okay, I'm going to prove myself. And so I made these resolves um, that I was going to prove to myself and to everyone else, whoever that invisible audience was, that I was good enough. And so I developed this formula, this formula that said, you know, my performance plus the approval of others equals my happiness or my validation or my security. And that is a formula that a lot of us, probably most of us, do subconsciously have. Um, and it's a really, really dangerous one that just leads us into a path of um, people pleasing, um, even depression, not knowing ourselves, changing ourselves to be a chameleon, no matter like, you know, re depending on the audience that we're in front of or the group that, that we're in. And Essentially, we just don't even know ourselves anymore and we're not secure. Um, and so I wanted to be a role model, but I also, you know, had this need to prove myself. And I thought that once I became Miss USA, that I would feel validated. I would finally feel confident. I would finally feel beautiful. And what I realized after I won and I moved to New York City and I was living this dream was that no title or no crown, no amount of success will ever complete you. It's just going to take you to another level of comparison. And am I good enough? And am I the real deal? Um, am I just an imposter? If people found out who I really was, maybe they would think that I'm not supposed to be here. And uh, so I just love how God kind of used all of that uh, to eventually show me what it looks like to wear a crown, wear his crown, the crown that he has given us, that gives us true validation and true security, true confidence that is unwavering and it's everlasting and it's stable and it's freeing and it's powerful. And so I learned, um, even though I've been raised a Christian my whole life, I never actually knew who I was in him. I didn't know that there were promises that he spoke over my life. Um, I didn't know that he said, you were altogether beautiful, my darling, there is no flaw in you. I didn't know that he said, you are more precious and more valuable than rare jewels. Um, I didn't know that he said that you were more than a conqueror in Christ. And if you're more than a conqueror, then you've already won the battle. 
And so I realized that this, this formula that I had developed, my performance plus other people's approval equals my happiness or success, was actually in reverse um, in God's kingdom. And in his kingdom, the economy in that formula is because of God's approval, you are validated. And, and from that place of validation and victory and love comes the good works and comes the performance. And that is such a more liberating place to operate from. And I'm so passionate about every woman knowing that because if we all are truly confident in who he says that we are and our identity, then jealousy can be wiped out. Depression, we can be healed from depression. We can, we can actually expect and believe for incredible romantic relationships we will surround ourselves by women and friends who bring out the best in us rather than trying to please people in order to fit into a group which is so exhausting um, so true <laughs> yes learn how to set godly boundaries for our life and we will live out the purpose that he's placed in our heart not from a place of striving and trying to get other people to notice or to recognize us, but just because we are doing it for an audience of one. And that is a place I've been operating from for the last couple of years. And it is so incredible because, you know, the Bible says that we live and we die by the sword. So if we live by compliments and we live by encouragement and people noticing, that is also the thing that we will die by. Hmm. And so now, like, when people give me compliments, like, it's nice, but it doesn't really do anything for me like it used to like it used to like fill me up and I would like live for that but now I'm just like great but it, it's so crazy to see how it, it it doesn't really do that much for me and in the same sense neither does criticism or negativity or the lack of recognition um because really all I care about is even doing this conference that you just brought up doing crowns um I just care about completing the task that God told me to do, and that's it. Um, and so anyways, if we can just live from that place, we will be happy. We'll actually get to enjoy the gifts of life that God has given us. And that's why I created, um, like you brought up, sheismore.com, is because when I had the revelation of who we are as a daughter of the king, and that we are royalty, and that we have an inheritance and we get to live in God's kingdom um, and we get to live as heavenly creatures here in the earth and as new creatures in Christ. Uh, I'm so passionate about that. It literally changes your life. Like our life can be magical yes. and it doesn't have to be, you know, being a Christian is not about just being saved and going to heaven one day. It's about bringing heaven to earth now. It's about living in your heavenly self now. And if we can just find out what that means and, and tap into the, the access of that and tap into God's voice here in the earth, I mean. Uh, then you're truly like living in the flow. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So Kristen, tell me specifically about She Is More because that's become now your brand and it's so empowering to women everywhere. So share a little bit about what's the vision behind that and what do you do at sheismore.com? Well, it's really cool because She Is More has kind of organically uh, morphed since I even first started it. Uh, so I was originally blogging on my personal site, Kristen J. Dalton, since I was Miss USA. But I felt like, I think it was um, probably four years ago, that God was telling me to, to basically think bigger and to think beyond myself and to get, get outside of my own personal brand um, and, and to expand so other people can be included. Um, and so I had no idea what that was going to look like. And that is one thing about doing life with God is like you feel like he's telling you something, but you don't really know what to do with it or how to do it or what it's going to look like. Sometimes you just have to take it day by day and literally just follow like 
his voice and his instructions, regardless of if you know what the outcome is going to be. So one night I was laying in bed and I was almost asleep and I was asking God, I was praying, I was like, Lord, what is this thing that you want me to do? Like, what do you want to call it? What is it called? And as I was falling asleep, I heard she is more precious than rubies. And then it shortened to she is more. And I popped out of bed. I was like, oh, that's it. She is more. And my husband was asleep. It was like 2 a.m. And I whispered in his ear. I was like, she is more.com. And uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, that's good, baby. And then I went and I immediately the domain was available. I bought it. I had no idea like what it was even going to look like. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I need to buy the domain. Um, And then it just turned into, it started out with me just, you know, kind of blogging and writing what God was teaching me in my own um, faith walk. And then I just, I'm so, I love hearing other people's stories and I'm really passionate about just like drawing out the gold in other people. And um, so I started featuring my friends' stories and how God had worked in their life. And then other people started writing and saying, like, can I share my story? And I was like, okay. (laughs) And uh, I realized that writing three or four times a week is a lot. And so I started letting other people contribute uh, more to to She Is More. And so it started out with, So the mission is um, for every woman to, like, in every single article, it all comes back to our value and our and our identity in Christ. Um, And I still do videos. I love teaching, like teaching and encouragement and wisdom. I think are my top three like spiritual gifts. Like, if you take a spiritual test, those are my top. That's cool. So I love teaching. So I do um, videos and like what God is teaching me mm-hmm. and I still write on those things. And now that I am, you know, married and pregnant, I'm about to start a family. Uh, yeah. It's it's like really fun because, you know, my writing, my writings kind of match where I am in life. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> what started out is a lot, what started out is more, I guess, like younger writing weird yeah. now you'll see some more pregnancy stuff yes. and deal with that transition and um I write a lot on marriage and love and I just wanted to create a space where uh women could come and just read and be inspired from my life and what I'm going through because I'm extremely transparent. Um, yeah. My mom doesn't really like how transparent I am. <laughs> She's from the South. And in the South, you know, we like to make sure everything like looks good That's and, right. you know, in front of other people. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so it's a site where other people can contribute and share stories and then I share my own too. Yeah. Well, you truly are. I agree with that, uh, how you see yourself. And I know the spiritual gifts test is like awesome. And so it's good to know those because then you're able to present that to the world. Uh, You definitely are a skilled teacher and also a skilled writer. Uh, I know you've written, actually, I have here your two books, Rise Up Princess. This is an incredible, um, I guess, experience uh, when I, it's so, what's interesting, so this is devotional and I'll have you share more about it too, but I want to just say my experience with this has, it's, it felt at first, I was like, this is very simple, but in the simple areas is where the Holy Spirit moves because it's not, our, our head doesn't get involved. You know, if you are learning something super complex and it's like this big, long, whatever, sometimes I find for me, my head gets so involved that my spirit, it doesn't have like space to move. But with this, I truly felt like God was moving through my experience going through this devotional. So awesome, awesome. And then She Is More, Rise Up With God, a guided journal. Both of these have blessed my life incredibly. Can you share a little bit more about your experience in writing these? Yeah. So with Rise Up Princess, and this also goes back to just following whatever God is telling you in whatever season that you're in. Uh, Because I think sometimes like, we as women, we want to take on the world and change the world and live at our purpose. And we have this big vision and then it seems so overwhelming and we don't know 
what to do first. And it really just comes down to being obedient in whatever season you're in. So uh, with Rise Up Princess, I was on a like a ministry speaking tour slash trip in Australia where my husband and I were speaking in churches and youth groups. So uh, so I was speaking to the, to these amazing girls, like uh, middle school and high school, college age girls who go to church and youth group every Sunday. They're involved. You know, they know the word of God. Uh and I would hang out with them afterwards and they would come to me like bawling, crying, telling me the things that they were going through, the things that were happening to them, things going on at school. And I was just holding them in my arms like, I can't believe like these are girls who are in church. They are plugged into youth groups and they literally do not know who they are. It's mind blowing. I'm like, if they don't know who they are in Christ, if they don't know what God says about them and their royal identity, then nobody does. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I'm just like sitting there holding them for hours, even after I was supposed to be there. And I wanted to tell them everything. Like I wanted to equip them and, and hang out with them and bring them back with me and adopt them. But oh. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't do that. And then, and then I'm just sitting there thinking like, there's so many other girls like this. Um, and I just, well, I wish I could just like leave them with like, write them a really long letter and leave it with them, you know, so I can't replicate myself. And so that is what inspired me to write rise up princess because it's essentially, um, it's claiming God's word over your life. There, I mean, look, affirmations and saying, I am pretty, I am smart, I am amazing. Like those things are good, but they're not, it's, it's not like the living and active word of God. And so if, and if you don't believe those things already, then it's a lot harder for those affirmations to actually take root and to be powerful in your life. So it says in the Bible that the word of God is living and active, it's sharper than any double-edged sword, and that it separates our flesh from our spirit. And so uh, Rise Up Princess is separated in, into three categories that she reveals. And so she reveals um, for 20 days, it's going through basically the lies and the covering and the veil and the things that have come on you in the world that are hiding your original design, the original design that God made you to be. It's addressing those things and debunking debunking them with the power of declarations and the word of God and, and thanking God for who he made you to be. And then uh, she radiates, which is claiming uh, your beauty and confidence and all of the scripture that God says about that. And then the third part is she reigns, which is about your purpose and what God has called you to be and to do and the light that he has called you to be in this world. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, that's what inspired me to write Rise Up Princess because it's really foundational. Like you said, it's like we got to get back down to basics. That's right. And get back down to who we are and what our identity is. Uh, And then once we address the lies, then getting to who we actually are. So now that, now that we're revealed, then what do we do with that? What do we do in our future? Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then our purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's Rise Up Princess. And then the guided journal. Uh, So the guided journal is really important to me because God first started speaking to me through journaling. I wasn't raised uh, in my faith, learning how to hear from God or even knowing that God spoke to me. Yeah. Um, and so when I finally realized that God does speak to us and we do get to hear from him on a daily basis, every when we seek him, we will find him. And it says that his sheep will know his voice. And so I just started pressing into how does he speak to me? Um, and does he speak to me? Or am I like special enough? Or, you know, does he only speak to like pastors or... Yeah you know, Christian authors. Um, And I learned that he does speak to every single one of us because we're his daughters. And uh, we have his DNA flowing through our vein. He created us and he adopted us to be chosen and set apart. So um, 
So he first started speaking to me through journaling. And I just believe so much revelation can come through journaling. But a lot of people don't know what to say. Like, what do I write about? How do I first start? How do I hear? What what questions do I ask God? How do I? And so I um, created the the guided journal to to go alongside with Rise Up Princess, but it can also be done separately. That kind of leads you into prompts, like reflective prompts uh, to talk to God about and to also address how you are um how you're feeling and to actually go inward and discover what's going on in there because most of the time we don't take time to actually think about that Mm -hmm. or to look inward and to Mm -hmm. self-reflect and that's a really powerful thing to do so so true so the first time i went through rise up princess i just had this book and then when uh, this one came out, I actually have used this not for journaling, but for meditation. Because uh-huh. I was always like, oh, I'm not really a journaler. I don't know. I don't really get into that. And then I went to Crowned, your recent event. And at that event, you actually had us do active journaling. And that's where I was like, oh, there's something to this. Like I got excited about like, okay, this kind of is like a good thing. And I, I didn't really feel it before. I've, I've attempted journaling, but I just right. felt like I was like writing a blog, like long form or something. But at your experience, you helped to unlock something in me about journaling that I was like, okay, it's time to revisit this because now I want to do them alongside and do it journaling because I felt like um, at Crowned, you opened that up in me to see like, okay, I, there is something here I haven't yet explored. That's like a whole new dimension of, cause when your hand is writing, your hand knows what to write. And it was like, things were coming out, like things were coming out when you were having us journal. I was like, whoa, that, nuh-uh, no way. Wow. And some things that, um, after the encounter, which we're actually going to be able to take our audience through today. Um, after that you had us also journal and I was like, oh my gosh, I just wanted to remember everything about that moment. And so journaling was the best way to like remind myself of all of that. So what a powerful tool. So, so talk a little bit about crowned crowned was a sort of two day event, but really Saturday was the main conference piece. And what an incredible experience. You had so many wonderful people, an incredible group of people even coming together to produce the event. Uh, so share a little bit about that event and, uh, maybe some of the takeaways that you gained from hosting that. Oh, geez. <laughs> I know, probably a lot, right? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay, so I have known since I started She Is More, and just since God made his calling on my life very clearly, some of the things um, and aspects that that entails. Um, and they are, obviously, She Is More, uh, the blog is kind of my hub, and then creating books, resources, uh, journals, tools, things like that, and then a women's conference and retreats. So, um, so I did my first retreat last November, yay! And then I felt like in December, God was like, "Okay, now this year is time to do the conference." And so I spent a whole day in December uh, just soaking. And soaking is basically just spending uninterrupted time in the presence of God through worship, music, and prayer. So that's what I was doing. Um, and I was just asking God, what is, okay, Lord, like, what does it look like? Because I don't like to do anything outside of his will or in my own strength. I want him to direct my steps and I want him to be the one who gives me the vision. So he gave me the vision and I asked him, I was like, Lord, who is going to speak at the conference? And I saw a picture of Sherry Rose Shepherd. She was on stage with me. And Sherry Rose Shepherd wrote the devotional, or yeah, the devotional is His Princess. Um, and then there's a whole series of His Princess Warrior, His Princess Bride. Um, and her books had been very uh, impactful on me in different walks that I've been through. So I didn't even know her yet. Um, I had no idea that she lived in Orange County, which is only an hour away from me. It's literally right next to. Uh, TV and Studios, which is where I'm a host and where we did our live show on Friday night that launched the whole conference. So I interviewed her in January and I found out 
that day that I interviewed her that she had actually taken the last two years completely off from speaking, from doing interviews. She had declined all of them. And she told me that I was the first person that she said yes to. Um, and that she didn't know why, but she felt like when she prayed about it, God told her to say yes. And uh, so that was just like crazy and so cool. Um, and then I told her about my idea, my vision for her or for us to do a conference together. And her immediate response was yes. Wow. She was like, yes, actually, I was going to ask you if you wanted to do a conference with me. And I was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, incredible. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying about just being obedient to what God shows you and trusting that he speaks to you and then just doing something about it because he will orchestrate it. Um, he will hey, bring the past. Kristen, I want to go off on a tangent here because you've talked a lot about like listening to God and hearing him speak and he's showing you visions and all these things, but to someone who's never really experienced that before, they might not even know what to be looking for. How do you distinguish God's voice versus something you just want to do yourself versus like an idea your mom had for you or something like, how do you really, how did you learn to distinguish God's voice and to know it's him and to be able to see it show up in maybe how other people are speaking or the vision versus the voice? Is it audible? Like, Share a little bit about your experience with that. Well, first of all, I want to say that sometimes your own desires and God's desires are the same mm -hmm. because the word desire means of the Father, and He is the one who gives us desires. Um, but at the same time, our heart is deceitful above all things. So that's why we, we want to check our desires um, in the filter of the Word of God. So, uh, okay, so to answer your question, um, okay, so God speaks to us, each one of us, in different ways. Um, he speaks to us through, so first, okay, back up. First, it says in the Bible that we, as a new creature in Christ, that we have the mind of Christ. So that alone should give you the confidence of knowing that he does speak to you. And that if you are getting something in prayer, in sincere prayer, when you seek him, if you get a picture or an image that is resonating within you, you should believe that that is from him. Um, especially if it gives you an, over, an overwhelming sense of peace and clarity, because God is the author of peace and not confusion. So if you feel any confusion of all, at all, that is not from God. Um, that is from the enemy. Uh, and so you also just want to make sure that any anything that you get or sense um, checks out, like I said, through through the Bible and through the Word of God. So he speaks to us through uh, visions, images, um, Bible verses. Sometimes you'll get like a Bible verse popping in your head. Sometimes it'll just be a reference and you have to look it up. For me, that's the most fun because then I know it's not my own memory, you know? Um and a lot of times he has given me verses like in Haggai. He gave me Haggai too. <laughs> I was like, is that even a book? Yeah. <laughs> and that's so fun because yeah. then you go read it and it's like, like reading your mail, then you know it was him. Uh, so he speaks to us through Bible verses, scripture, images, um, visions, um, sentences too. Like I, I lead women through encounters every Wednesday night for my women's group and there are some girls in my group that are more um, left-brained, analytical. It's hard for them to get into the whole vision thing. I have other girls who are very creative and very tapped into their right brain, and they see things like crazy, like these beautiful visions. But the girls who are more analytical, they will get like an overwhelming um, sense of just peace. Or they will uh, see like Bible verses or um, hear like a word. Wow. So everyone is different and that's why it's important that we learn how God speaks to us and know that it changes from season to season because God does not like to be put into a box. And once you start expecting to hear from him in a certain way, uh, that's when he changes things. <laughs> <laughs> 
You just have to trust and know that he's always there and he's always leading and guiding you um, regardless of, of what that looks like or if you're getting something or hearing something or seeing something. You can't compare your, your experience or your relationship with God to anyone else's. And I think that's a really big block is when we're like, oh, like God speaks to this person in this way, but he doesn't speak to me that way. So that must mean, mean that he doesn't love me or I'm doing something wrong or, you know, yeah. whatever. We have to get past that and know that God is, he's always there and that when we seek him, we will find him. And there have been seasons for me where I am so used to God showing me like beautiful visions and giving me very specific words. There was a season recently where I was getting nothing at all. Like I did not feel like he was speaking to me, even in worship, usually in worship, by the way, worship um, is what leads us into the presence of God. So if you want to be in the presence of God, worship is where it's at. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't like, I didn't feel like he was speaking to me in worship. I was like, what is going on? Am I doing something wrong? Is there a block? Uh, and what I had to realize is that I was expecting to hear and see from God um, in a way that I was used to. And I had to trust that he wasn't leaving me. He didn't leave me or forsake me. And that in the time that he wasn't, he wasn't coming up for me in the way I was used to, he was showing up in a different way. Mm. And that I just had to trust, even if I didn't feel it or see it or hear it, that he was still there. And I realized he was actually doing work within, like wow. in work. Um, wow. And, you know, when we aren't getting that sensation yeah. from him or whatever, that is when we have to trust and lean not on our own understanding, but his. And that's when we have to open the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that's when we have to worship. Because sometimes he won't, he won't, he will be silent in ways that, you know, we want to hear from him for a reason. And he's mm -hmm. always doing it for a reason. And it's always for our good and our growth. Yeah. I love that. That was so well described. And I, I like how you say that, like different seasons. I experienced about a Maybe more like two years ago, I experienced uh, God in a completely new way where he was showing up on a regular basis with these wowzers kind of aha uh -huh moments for me. Like I was, oh, wow, 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 all, constantly all the time. And then in about the last maybe three to five months, he's been showing up more at, like I'm getting spanked a lot lately. <laughs> like he's like, Alicia, no, I told you you should be doing this instead, Alicia, you need to be doing this now, Alicia. Like he keeps correcting my path. And thank goodness, because that's what a good father does is he steers you away from the things that are not going to be helpful and into the things that are the best for you, you know? And I experienced that actually at Crowned while we were there. Uh, one of the speakers, and in fact, let me look it up. I think it was Jen Lilly said, submit and be obedient because he's going to take you on the, the adventure of a lifetime. And to me, that really translated well, because I, I felt like I I'm seeking an adventure of a lifetime. Like that's like one of my core values is adventure. And like, I'm, I'm after that. And just, just know that by submitting and not striving, that that's something that I can step into. And so it's a, it, it's truly crowned was an incredible experience. And the encounter is the encounter that you're referencing that you do on Wednesday nights. Is that what you're going to take the audience through today? Yes. Ah, awesome. It's going to be so good. So let's yeah. set this up so that we can explain it to people. Uh, Cause there, this is going to be a wild and amazing experience for people to have with you. Uh, but before we do that, I first want to just let people know that they, where they can find you. So where's the best place for them to go to get more information about how they can get involved with She Is More or where can they follow you? Um, well, they can go, you can go to my blog at sheismore.com and also on social media, uh, Kristen, I think at Kristen J. Dalton is my handle for Instagram and Twitter. And I don't know what my handle is on Facebook, but you can just look up Kristen Dalton Wolf. And even my personal page is I think it's like pretty public, like anyone can follow it and you can see everything that private people see too. <laughs> okay, cool. So my 
personal page is basically like a public page. So just Kristen Dalton Wolf on Facebook. Cool. That's perfect. So we'll be able to follow all of your journey. Tell us right now, uh, before we go into the encounter, just what are you most like jazzed about? Like what's just getting you super excited right now in your life? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> It's so, it's so, and okay, I'm going to try to keep this answer short, but okay. basically, you know, I'm nine months pregnant and I'm about to meet my baby girl. And I'm so, I can't, like when I think about like looking at her eyes, it's, I, ugh, it makes me, makes me emotional and cry. And uh, so anyways, I'm really excited about that and being a mommy. Um, but it's so interesting, the parallels with pregnancy and giving birth to new life you know, in the physical sense, but then also kind of when God is birthing a new idea or dream within you that he wants you to birth. And I'm like, Lord, I feel like you're making me birth so many things. Like I just birthed this conference. I, am uh, birthing a baby and I got, um, a book deal for my next book. It's called the sparkle effect, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, which I'm excited about because, um, it's by the same publishers who published Joyce Meyer, who is my role model, and I kind of want to emulate her ministry, uh, and Joel Osteen, who I really love too. So that is happening. But I also, um, I just feel like God is giving me some new ideas and visions for She Is More and for what I'm about to lead everyone through this encounter. I want to create an album for people to be able to listen to. And to be able to connect with God. Uh, so that and just figuring out how to even do that and the first steps to take. And then I'm going to be creating an online course for the Sparkle Effect um, that leads up to the book that just teaches and takes women through what it means to sparkle. Because we talk about certain women having the it factor and, oh, she just, she has that thing or she has the it factor and she just sparkles or, you know, she has this glow about her and then girls are kind of left to turn it on or to figure out what that is or to fake it till you make it. But so is it, so is the it factor just meant for certain people or can everyone have it? And so that's what the sparkle effect is. It's defining that sparkle and what it takes to get it. So I'm excited about all those things. It's like Whoa. a lot. Yeah, you've got so much going on. This is such a cool season of your life. I just absolutely love that. And I just want to honor all of the work that you are doing in this world because truly your light and what you have developed and what you've created, it all these things, it looks beautiful because you're excited about it. It's wonderful, but it's not easy to do. And yeah. so I just want to acknowledge you for putting in the work and for listening to get God's download because we know that that whatever God's telling you is what the world absolutely needs. And just your obedience in listening to what he has to say and stepping into it even and through all of the storms that come along with that. I just want to honor your work and just say it's truly blessing people. So thank you and please continue. <laughs> thank you, Alicia. And thank you too for being such a honoring person who is able to see and recognize those things. I, I think, you know, I can't remember. There's like a quote about that. It's like deep cries out to deep. Uh, it's in the Bible. It's a Bible verse that okay. deep cries out to deep. So you see it yeah. and you notice it because you, you're doing the same thing. Thank you. you. Know? I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Well, what we're about to walk people through is going to change lives. So uh, for those that are watching on iTunes, uh, we are uh, uh, rather on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, we're actually going to turn off our video right now because we are going to go into a meditative state. If you are watching on iTunes, uh, rather listening on iTunes, get to a place where you can really be relaxed. So somewhere where you can be clo closing your eyes. Don't do this in the car. Don't do this on your run or something like take a little pause uh, and just allow yourself this moment to uh, have an amazing encounter. So the way that we're going to do this is Kristen is going to set us up with what to expect here. She's going to walk us through the experience and then lead us out of it and allow for some time at the end for some journaling. So Kristen, take it away. Okay. I just encourage you right now to find a place where you can relax 
where you can lay down or just get really comfortable and close your eyes. Because I'm going to lead you into an encounter with Jesus where you actually get to meet him, you actually get to ask him questions. So Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your daughter. Lord, thank you that you long to connect with her and you long to speak to her and that you love when she gets to hear your voice. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and for tearing the veil that separated us from God. Thank you for reconciling us back to God so we could be in perfect unity and perfect communion with him. And thank you that when we seek you, we always find you. Thank you that you say in you as your chosen daughter that I have the mind of Christ and that I get to hear your voice without a doubt, confidently and clearly. Is I am your bride, I am your daughter, I am your princess, and I am your sheep who knows your voice. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would make your presence so tangible within your daughter's body right now. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would begin to flow through your daughter's mind, that you would calm the voices, that you would silence the images, silence the worries that are not of you. In Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would continue to flow down from our minds into our hearts, that you would calm our heartbeat. That you would make me lie down in green pastures and that you would lead me beside quiet waters. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you will ensure that no voice, no image, no distraction comes into my mind as I go to meet Jesus. In Jesus' name. from this place you are in your body but the cool thing about being in God's kingdom and a new creature is that you have a heavenly self you are not just in your flesh you are seated in heavenly places and you have a heavenly citizenship You have a heavenly spiritual person within you. And your heavenly self begins to float outside of your body. And you float up through the ceiling, the room that you're in, and up through the sky into 
the galaxies where you pass the stars and the planets where God is holding everything together where he is holding earth and the sun and the moon in perfect position so if you trust him to do that then how much more can you trust him with your life you continue floating up and as you look upwards you see the crystal precipice of heaven and there are two angels waiting for you and they reach down and lift you up onto the precipice And you look to your right and ask the angel, what is your name? And what does this angel look like? And look to your left. Angel, what is your name? And what does this angel look like? The Bible says that you have inherited ministering angels, and these are two of yours, your personal angels. And they begin to lead you through the kingdom of heaven. They're guiding you They're guiding you into a garden. The garden is so magical. Mystical all around you. And peace overwhelms your body. And then they lead you to a clearing where there is a huge waterfall and the waterfall is tumbling and roaring down and there's no place where it starts or finishes this isn't just any waterfall the water is glittering it's iridescent there's something special about it is, well, you're in heaven. Your true home, by the way. And the angels lead you to the waterfall and they tell you, at any point during the day, at any point in your life, when you are overwhelmed and anxious and you forget who you are, you forget that you are actually your heavenly self, full access to God's love and power and promises. You can always lean back into the waterfall of God's love at any point and let it flood over you. And so you lean back into the waterfall and the waters rush over your body and through your body. Mm. The water is healing full of love. And the water goes up through your feet up through your arms and your hands and your fingers cleansing out any ache or pain 
any uh, bad cells, any sickness. The water makes everything new because God's will will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It also begins to cleanse impurities or woundings and shame as it goes through your stomach. Secret things that you've been holding on to. Maybe something painful that happened to you or something that you regret. And the water is going through and turning blackness into light. And the light shatters it all. It evaporates it. Because in Christ, there is no condemnation. And you have been made new. Then the waters flow up through your heart. And it's like there are these bats. These bats flying around your heart, like spider webs even around it in some places and the water washes it away in an instant and it immediately transforms into a glittering heart with butterflies the bats transform into butterflies because depression and anxiety and regrets and guilt have no place in God's daughter. Those things have been nailed to the cross and conquered. The enemy and his lies, things of your past, the voices of other people have no authority in your heart. Only the voice and the truth of Jesus Christ prevails. And then the waters begin to flow up into your brain, into your mind, where cloudiness begins to clear up because there is no confusion in Christ. Your mind begins to feel clear crystal clear. The clouds move away and your mind looks like a crystal blue clear sky. Where suddenly you're able to see yourself the way that Jesus sees you. Because you have the mind of Christ. And even there's like these like ticker tapes, ticker tapes that are running around the upward part of your mind of um, self-hatred, self-deprecation that you think makes you humble, but it's actually destroying your identity and your purpose. It's actually killing your light. And those ticker tapes that are even maybe half truths are eliminated right now in the name of Jesus. And after the healing and the cleansing, the waters fill you up from your feet to your head with God's love. Love blankets you. It floods you with warmth, this golden glow. 
you have been renewed to your new nature that Christ died to give you. <clears throat> and so then you step out of the waterfall and the angels, your personal angels, meet you and they clothe you with a robe of righteousness with shoes of peace, with a diadem of faith. And then they lead you out into the field and they're standing, waiting for you, is Jesus. <laughs> and he's been waiting for you As you look at him from a distance, his eyes are warm and soft and adoring. And as you approach him, he embraces you and he calls you my bride. My bride, I've been waiting for you. And he gazes into your eyes. What color are Jesus's eyes? And how does it feel to look into them? And now that you have some one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus, you ask him, Jesus, what do you call me? And the first positive word that pops into your mind, take that. And Jesus has something for you. Jesus, what do you want to give me? And you hold out your hand. And what does he give you? Mm. Jesus, what does this mean? What do you want me to do with it? He might show you an image right now. He might speak words. He might give you a Bible verse or just an overwhelming sense. And he says, but there's something that you have to give me too in order for, you, for what I've given you to fully be able to function. There's something that's stopping you, that's blocking you from using this gift. Either something or someone. What is it? And how much longer are you gonna hold on to it? Do you really trust me? When I died on the cross, I saw your face. And you made it all worth it. So, why would you hold on to something that is not serving you? Do you trust me to take it? and to make up for the void. And Jesus holds out his hand. And in your posture of surrender 
and trust, which is the place where all magic happens with God. You hand it over. (laughs) Jesus smiles and says, well done, my good and faithful bride. And from behind his back, he pulls out and holds out a crown, your crown. What does your crown look like? Everyone's crown is different and unique specifically to convey who he made you to be. (laughs) And he sets the crown on your head and calls you my chosen one. And then Jesus and your two angels begin to escort you back to the precipice of heaven. And you think that you're going to leave Jesus there, but actually, Jesus says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And I am always with you. And I am sending you someone greater than me, your helper. And Holy Spirit joins you there. What does Holy Spirit look like? And Jesus says, let's go back into the earth because you have a commission to bring light and healing into the earth. And Jesus actually walks into you (laughs) because he abides in you and you abide in him. And you are full of your new nature in Christ. So fully cleansed, purified, equipped with what Jesus calls you and the thing he's given you and your surrender, you, Holy Spirit, and your two angels drift back down through the galaxies, (laughs) through the sky, and back through the ceiling the room you're in and into your body, the vessel, the temple that God created you to thrive and flourish in. Jesus, thank you so much for meeting us where we are every time that we speak to you. I thank you that you always have a fresh word specifically for us and that you speak into what we're going through, our circumstances, our situations. And I just thank you that you say that they don't have to stay the same. Um, That I am more than a conqueror in you and that regardless of my circumstances, I can be full of joy. I can be full of peace. I can be full of healing. I can be full of my true self. I don't have to let circumstances and people, lies, other people's voices, and the enemy get inside of me. Rather, I can conquer it through you because you have already won the battle. And Jesus, I just steal up the truth and the beauty that you just led your daughter through, your bride through. And I ask that if anything came in through that, our our own personal thoughts or distractions or um, lies that discount us, that maybe discounted what you said, I ask that would fall off in Jesus' name. Amen. And so right now, I encourage you to get your journal 
for a piece of paper and a pen and write down everything that you just saw, that you just felt, and that you just experienced. And make sure to date it, because dates are really important. So you can reflect back on what Jesus said to you and what happened on this day. Put on worship, worship music. And I just encourage you to stay in a place of prayer and worship and see if there's anything else he has to say to you. Amen. I hope that your heart is feeling full and that you are feeling free. Ah. I know after an experience like that, your whole world perspective might shift. And that is why journaling can really, really be helpful. And even if it's not journaling in the sense of, you know, writing Dear Diary, but maybe just taking down some bullet points and some notes, like really just reflecting on what did you gain from that? And what were the things that truly sparked something new in you? And I, and I truly hope that something new was sparked in you. If it was, would you please comment in the comment box below so that we can really have a deeper understanding of how this has changed your life and how we can further support you. If you loved this video, please give it a thumbs up. I know that Kristen would appreciate that so much and so would I. And also share this episode with someone that you want to bless because this is an experience that is going to be so unique to each person. They're really going to be able to grow and just just feel loved and, and feel honored and, and have their beauty shine through. So please share this with someone that you love and adore and respect. Thank you again for being a part of the Win a Pageant podcast, and I'll see you next week.